I hope you've all got different triangles. Now, uh, that should probably be enough. You just need a, it doesn't need to be a really super accurate measurement. Here are my measurements. My triangle, obviously, substantially larger than yours. But what I want to point out is a very simple fact about triangles. One that you've known for a very, very long time, but have never really had to appeal to because it's like, well, I, I never really had to worry about it. Have a look at the length of your triangle, okay? Uh, look at the length of the sides. Now, can you see, it's kind of plainly obvious that if I take any of these sides, any individual side, for example, let's have a look at AB, okay? The length of AB cannot possibly exceed the sums of the lengths of the other two sides. Do you see that? Right? You've got 61 here. This side has to be shorter than, or in a weird case, equal to the sum of these two sides added together. Right? Does that make sense? It's got to be less than or equal to. It can't possibly be more. can't possibly be more. Because if you want to think about it this way, if you've got this side here, and it was, say, well, what's, the, um, what's the sum? It's 76 here, right? If my um, AB was... Uh, 80 centimeters, right? There's no way that AC and BC with their current lengths could reach out and connect and make the triangle, right? It'd be something like this. Good morning. Uh, you've had, you'd have your long AB there, and then BC would try and reach, and AC would try and reach, and they just wouldn't get there, right? So you can see 61 has to be shorter than these two added together. And I can make the same argument actually for any of the sides of the triangle, right? This 41, it's got to be less than or equal to the sum of these two sides. And 35 has to be less than or equal to the sum of these two sides, right? Otherwise, your sides don't connect. You won't get a triangle. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, this is a very, very obvious fact when you're just looking at a triangle, okay? But the reason why I'm pointing it out now is because the whole point of thinking about complex numbers geometrically, if you remember, was that everything you know about geometry can then be applied to your complex numbers. Okay, so I want you to have a think as I um, prime up my next diagram, and you can draw yourself a complex plane as well. Uh, let's do it in the first quadrant for this first one. Triangles pop up everywhere when you think about complex numbers and how they relate to each other. Okay, in fact, there are already some very obvious relationships that we can have a look at, which will take advantage of this. Okay? So, keeping that guy on the board, let's draw. <coughs> excuse me. Let's draw ourselves. Uh, we'll do it in the first quadrant. A complex plane, like so. And let's pop a um, let's pop a Z1 and Z2 on here. We tend to do it something like this. <coughs> okay, now the most obvious first way to combine this, in fact the way we've always been starting every time we look at a new idea is let's think about what happens when we add these, okay? Let's think about what happens when we add them. So if I do Z1 plus Z2, where should Z1 plus Z2 be on this diagram? What shape will be formed when I plot Z1 plus Z2? It'll be a parallelogram, right? Because of the parallelogram law. So just in another color, I'm gonna complete my parallelogram over here. Right. So there's the parallelogram you can kind of imagine there in the background. And Z1 plus Z2 is gonna take you to the opposite corner. It's the diagonal. In this case, it's the long diagonal of this parallelogram. Okay, so. okay now, <coughs> excuse me. Because you've got this parallelogram, right? A parallelogram is made of a pair of triangles. So I can see in this diagram, thinking about <coughs> complex numbers, not just as points, but as vectors, right? For instance, let's have a look at this um, this bottom half of the parallelogram here, right? See how I've got Z2? Z2, think about that. That's the position vector of Z2 that I've got right there because it comes from the origin. Okay, there's the position vector. But if I consider one of the free vectors of Z2, one of the free vectors that represents Z2, if I just move it to the opposite side, the parallel side of the parallelogram, over here, okay, what I've got here is this magnitude is the same, right? Because that free vector represents the same <coughs> complex number, okay? These lengths are going to be the same. So I've got a length over here. This is the position vector, so I've still got that magnitude there. And then that diagonal, its magnitude is the magnitude of the sum, okay? Now, have a look at this triangle here, right? And what statements we can make in terms of inequalities 
based on this triangle here that are similar to what we said here. Okay? So for instance, let's come back to our original triangle. Right? I can say that AB, right, that's one side of the triangle, has to be less than or equal to the sum of the other two sides. Right? AC plus BC. Do you agree with that? Right, that's what we were saying before, because if it were greater than, then the other two sides wouldn't be long enough to connect and complete the triangle. Yeah? How can it be equal to Ah, now, so that's a bit of a funny case, really. What would happen if AB were exactly equal to the sum of AC and BC? That's kind of a bit weird, because in this context, you wouldn't have a triangle anymore, would you? You'd kind of just have a straight line, and there's the long side, and then you've got one of the short sides in here, and then the other short side there, and they're just all sitting on top of each other. Yeah. Okay? But strictly speaking, the lengths can still connect is what I mean, right? And in the context of a complex, a set of complex numbers, um, you can still have those and they can still, the intervals will still match up, okay. okay? So that is a special case. We'll talk about that a bit more in time, but I have to include it, okay? Remembering as well, I can say that statement not just about one side of the triangle, I can say it about any of them, all right? Good one, come in. So there's one of them. Uh, I can say that about AC, it's also got to be less than or equal to the sum of the other two sides. AB plus BC. And I can say it about the last side as well, which is BC. Okay, now, based on saying that in our regular or triangle up there, what equivalent statements can I make down here in this triangle? Let me just... Um, Shade this in red so you can see the particular triangle I'm talking about. Okay, that's the triangle I'm interested in. So what statements can I make based on the magnitudes of these lengths in this triangle? Yeah, give me one. Equals? Okay, now, I'm going to pause for a second. So I want to think about, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to think about it in, in these terms, right? You consider one side, one side, and then you've got to say, based on the fact that I want the sides to connect, it's got to be less than or equal to. I can say it the other way around, and in fact, I will later on for a different triangle. But for here, I'm trying to draw the parallel between here and here. I won't rub this off. I'll leave that there. Okay, so there's a, um, in this case, in my particular diagram, that's my longest side, okay? And it's less than or equal to the sums of the other two sides, right? Z1, there's one of the sides. And Z2, there's the other one of the sides. Are you happy with that? Now, I can just as equally say that for all of the other sides, right? I can say... Good morning. I can say that for Z1. I can say it for Z2, right? And let's just complete this um, set of inequalities. Go. Now, <coughs> excuse me. These are all true. These are all true. Just like these are all true. Okay. However, when we talk about inverted commas, the triangle inequalities. Okay. Can you see that this one here is kind of more interesting and elegant than the other two? Okay. This one here refers to the fact that the modulus of a sum, the magnitude of a sum of vectors is less than or equal to the sum of the moduli of the vectors. Does that make sense? Right? Let me say that again. The, I mean, in fact, I'm going to write it. Okay? The modulus of a sum, the modulus of the sum, is less than or equal to the sum of the moduli. Right? Modulus of sum, less than or equal to the sum of the mods. Okay? We're going to look at a a concrete example of this in a second, but this is all I want to establish for now. Okay? These are both true as well. Okay? They're just less interesting to say. Okay? So this is my first result. Secondly, you remember um, in our parallelogram, right? that's not the only triangle that gets created. Um, I've got this triangle over here, though that, that triangle is congruent to the one I just said, so there's no more interesting stuff there. But there is another triangle based on the other Diagonal. What's the other diagonal? What complex number does it represent? It's vector. Z2 minus Z2. 
Okay, so I can either think about it in two ways, because remember that vectors have, um, have direction, right? So if I go from here down to here, that's z1 minus z2, or if I go in the opposite direction, that's z2 minus z1, okay? Now, I'm only thinking about lengths at the moment, right? So therefore, I, it doesn't matter which direction I'm interested in. As it happens, um, the modulus of a sum or the modulus of a difference is the same as if I turn it around, just like an absolute value, right? Remember this? Okay. We think about this in terms of, oh, right, the, uh, the absolute value means you disregard the sum. But what it really means is, sorry, you disregard the sign. But what it really means is you're thinking about the distance between these two, and no matter which way you're facing, the distance is the same. Right, does that make sense? 